Picture this. You're sitting in a sauna, sweat pouring, heart rate climbing, and all you want to do is escape the heat. But here's the twist. You're not just toughing it out for bragging rights. By enduring that heat, you're actually activating something powerful in your body called heat shock proteins, or HSPs. Think of these as your body's elite repair team ready to jump in and protect your cells when the heat is on, literally. Heat shock proteins are becoming a hot topic in health circles, pun intended, because they do more than just help us handle stress. They're linked to cellular resilience, improved recovery, and even increased longevity. But how do they work? And can you actually harness their benefits? Let's dive into what heat shock proteins are, how they work, ways to activate them for a healthier, more resilient you. So what are heat shock proteins? They're actually a type of protein uh, that's found naturally in our cells. They were first discovered when researchers observed their increased production in cells exposed to heat. But since then, science has shown that HSPs don't just react to heat. They respond to any kind of cellular, cellular stress, uh, like exercise, cold exposure, and even illness. So what exactly do they do? HSPs act as cellular chaperones. Their job is to protect proteins in our cells, helping them fold correctly and preventing damage. When cells are stressed, whether from heat, intense exercise, or environmental toxins, HSPs kick in to stabilize, repair, and even recycle proteins. Now, in other words, they keep your cells functioning optimally under pressure. This ability to handle stress at the cellular level is why HSPs are associated with everything from improved recovery to increased lifespan. Now, the benefits of heat shock proteins and why you should care is something we'll dive into here. Um, if HSPs just stayed busy behind the scenes, we probably wouldn't even be talking about them. But the reality is they're linked to a whole range of health benefits. Enhanced recovery. So after a tough workout, HSPs help repair muscle cells, reduce inflammation, speed up recovery time so you're back at it even sooner. Um, in regards to longevity and cellular health, studies have shown that increased HSP activity is actually linked to longer lifespans and better cellular health as they reduce the buildup of dam damaged proteins. Um, they're great against illness, so HSPs do boost the immune, immune system by helping cells respond uh, to stress more efficiently which can, it can aid uh, in fighting off infections and diseases. Um, it's great at improving brain health. So research does indicate that HSPs play a role in protecting neurons from damage, which is promising for maintaining brain health as we age. Um, now, how we can boost heat shock proteins is something we can talk about, we'll dive into here. Uh, the good news is that you don't need to wait for stress to activate these proteins. You can actually intentionally boost, boost HSP production with a, a few specific strategies. So the first one, embracing the heat, saunas and hot baths, as the name kind of implies, sauna therapy is one of the most effective ways to stimulate HSPs. Spending time in a sauna, which can be anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes at a high temperature, uh, exposes your body to enough heat to, to boost the HSP production. Um, in fact, a study published in the Journal of Human Kinetics found that people who used the sauna regularly had higher HSP levels and enjoyed improved cardiovascular and muscle health. Now, if you don't have access to a sauna, a hot bath may also trigger HSPs, though it may not be as effective as the higher heat environments. You just need to make sure that the water is hot enough to get a sweat going. Now, the second one is a bit ironic. It's cold exposure, so ice baths and cold showers. Yes, even cold exposure can increase heat shock protein levels. And it may seem counterintuitive, but the body is exposed to extreme cold, or when it's exposed to extreme cold, like in an ice bath or a cold shower, it activates a similar stress response that does boost HSP production. Studies have shown that cold therapy when used regularly can help promote resilience in the immune system and aid in the recovery uh, by stimulating these proteins. Now, if you're new to cold exposure, you know I'm a big fan, um, start with cold showers and work your way up to those ice baths or other forms of cold therapy. A little discomfort can go a long way in activating those HSPs. Uh, the third one is high-intensity exercise. So a high-intensity workout does more than just build muscle and burn calories. It also stimulates HSPs. When you push your body to its limits, whether through weightlifting, sprinting, or other forms of these intense exercises, your body recognizes the stress and calls HSPs into action. This is one reason why intense physical activity is actually uh, shown to improve resilience and recovery. Now, keep in mind, though, that balance is key. So without overdoing it, we need to make sure we have proper rest and that otherwise they can lead to chronic stress, uh, which is the exact opposite effect. So to give your body time to recover between those high intensity sessions is of utmost importance. Number four, intermittent fasting or other forms of fasting have also been shown to increase HSP levels. 
fasting does trigger a mild response in the body, a mild stress response, uh, which then activates HSPs. And the, <clears throat> excuse me, and these proteins can play a role in protecting cells during the fasting state, making them more resilient when they go back to processing nutrients. This process has been linked to benefits like improved cellular health, reduced inflammation, and even better energy regulation. So try starting with just basic intermittent fasting, uh, such as the 16-8 method where you fast for 16 hours and eat within an eight-hour window to see how your body responds. Myself, personally, I just consider that a normal eating pattern, so that does tend to boost the uh, the benefits here when it comes to fasting, a simple 16-8. Now, there are some risks and considerations. While stimulating HSPs has clear benefits, it's essential to approach these mes- methods with some caution. So a few things to keep in mind. Do not overdo it. Too much heat or cold exposure can lead to dehydration, exhaustion, even injury. So listen to your body. Start gradually, especially if you're new to these practices. Balance, as always, is key. The goal is to create controlled stress, not chronic stress. So overdoing high-intensity workouts or extreme cold exposure can backfire, leaving you feeling fatigued rather than energized. And as always, consult a health professional. If you have any health conditions, especially cardiovascular issues, Consult with the doctor before starting any kind of sauna, cold therapy, or intense fasting routines. Safety always first. The bottom line, why you should actually consider boosting and you know implementing these strategies for boosting heat shock proteins is they are your body's secret weapon. They help you handle stress, they help you recover faster, and potentially even live longer. By adding practices like sauna sessions, cold exposure, high-intensity workouts, potentially intermittent fasting to your routine, you can harness the benefits of HSPs and build a body that's more resilient, more responsive, and ready to take on whatever life throws at it. So the next time you're sitting in a sauna, freezing in a cold shower, or pushing through that last set at the gym, remember, you're not just enduring, you're optimizing, and your body will thank you. If you are interested in learning more about advanced health strategies, uh, we can build a personalized plan with a team of experts by checking out the link in the description of this video. So just drop down to that link, check out our one-to-one coaching. And as always, if you guys found value in this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. We'll catch you in the next one.